guys, wow. Okay, this is going to be quite the video. I wanna say welcome back to my channel, but I honestly haven't posted in so long, it's almost embarrassing. So I'm just gonna say welcome to my channel. As you can probably tell, this video is going to be about breast implant illness and my experience with everything as well as explanting. I explanted, so I got my implants, my breast implants removed the 26th of April. So it's day five post-op and I'm feeling actually okay. I really wanted to record this video prior to explanting so I could kind of explain like that side of it and show kind of what was going on and then take you guys through the whole explant process but if you guys can think about your most vulnerable confusing time of your life and then putting it out there for the internet eek, it was yeah i mean it's just it's not as easy as some of these people make it look i did throw out like a little questionnaire on my instagram the other day just about what you guys were wanting to get out of this video if you guys had any specific questions or if it was more just kind of like tell my own story with them and most of them were related to your timeline what symptoms you were experiencing like how did you know um just that kind of stuff so i think instead of reading those questions directly i think i'm just going to kind of walk through what i have experienced so my story i think is a little hard to really pinpoint exactly when I knew it was BII. And even now, like I'm not going to say like, oh, I'm 100% suffering from BII because I honestly still don't know. Um, I didn't get blood work done. I didn't go like get all these panels run and I didn't go see a gastro doctor and like all these different specialists and endocrinologists and all this stuff. Like some of these women that I have talked to or read their stories online or watched their YouTube series or whatever, they're getting blood work and just like test after test after test of, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. And um, I feel like as I was going through all of my beginning symptoms, um, I was also in contest prep. If you guys have ever seen big time competitors, it's an extreme sport. And me especially, I take prep to the extreme. So some of these symptoms are so vague that it, it is really hard to put like two and two together or which symptom was prep related versus which symptom was BII related because some of them do cross over along with like tons of other symptoms that cross over with tons of other diseases and autoimmune problems. So um, I am going to kind of give you guys like a timeline of when I got my implants, what I was doing whenever I got those implants, maybe throw up some pictures so you guys can tell and see if you guys can like piece everything together like I did. Um, June of 2017 is when I got my implants. Uh, I had just come off of a 25 week prep and I was still in prep, but I had just come off of a, a long, very hard 25 week prep, got implants and then about six weeks after my implants, I stepped back on stage. And this is kind of where like my symptoms, I was just not really sure which one was which. So um, immediately post-op, I remember feeling my throat. It was just so tight and closed off, like I could not breathe. As you can imagine, um, at such a crucial point of prep, I just had zero body fat. Um, I My intake was very low because I was at the end of prep, so I just wasn't having like the caloric needs to kind of recover from that type of surgery. And then, it's not like after surgery, I just, I went back into my off season and relaxed. Like as soon as I could get back on the treadmill and I was cleared to get back in the gym, I was back at it. I mean, obviously I wasn't hitting chest super hard because it was an excruciating pain, but um, I was just very quick to jump back in things. I didn't really think about like the recovery process. It was just like after nationals, I need boobs, scheduled a consultation, got the boobs, prepped for my next show and then, after that is when I kind of, I would say, rebounded post, post show again. So immediately post op, I remember my throat tightness and then just the excruciating pain on my chest. So um, a little backstory here, I was an A cup prior to implants and really had no tissue. And I went for a 455 
CC implant submuscular. Are you kidding me? Why I did that? I have no idea. Um, my surgeon at the time, I still think he's a great surgeon. Um, and just to clear this up, I did have a couple questions asking like if I thought it was a malpractice issue and no, not at all. I just think it's like your body either accepts it or it doesn't. Um, I had a very, very long, hard recovery. Uh, I don't even think I could move my arms like this for a straight two weeks post-op. And some of the women that I had talked to were like, oh yeah, two, three days, I'm up walking around doing errands, like no big deal. It was not like that for me. So I just, I think I had a really rough recovery um, right off the bat. And then I just didn't give myself proper time to actually heal from such a big surgery. So I do think that was like part um, of why my body didn't respond well to them. I don't think that because I didn't take that time, that's why I got BII. Because I, again, I don't think it's connected that way. I just think like my body's immune system was already kind of like haywire trying to figure out what I was doing in prep and like doing such a big extreme already that adding that other extreme on top of it just probably was not the best idea um, at that time. I went into my off season um, after that Arkansas show, after winning that overall. That show was at the end of August and so I took from August to about January um, where I really wasn't tracking food. I was still lifting really heavy. Um, but I just wasn't like obsessed with prep and everything that goes with prep. I wasn't, you know, food focused. I wasn't doing hours of cardio. Um, so I definitely relaxed a little bit. And during that time, I, I did notice some things, but I, again, this is where it's like a little fuzzy because I'm like, I'm not exactly sure what was prep talking to me and what was like my boobs talking to me you know <laughs> so obviously like some of the prep crossover symptoms of bii and just competition prep digestive problems food intolerances um you get those when you're dieting for a long time um, i've always kind of had some bloating and digestive issues but they just seem to really amplify after getting implants. Um, low libido or next to no libido, so sex drive. Um, again, that can be prep related or BII related, um, as well as just like not having enough intake related. So uh, again, I know these symptoms are super vague, but I'm just trying to, you know, kind of reflect and piece all of this together for myself too. So obviously fatigue, lack of recovery, constant brain fog, like all of that again can kind of be both. So those were some of the first things that I noticed. Um, I'd say like eight months after getting them or so. And then January rolled around and I started prep again. So I started a long 25 week prep or 25, 26 week season um, again. And so I, I had boobs then. Um, I would say my body was pretty hesitant to weight loss at first, but I think it was, it's kind of hard to justify that that was, you know, BII not allowing me to lose weight. Um, regardless, I, I pushed on, uh, went to those extremes again. That was just kind of like the reality of my prep uh, in 2018. So um, beyond that, I, I was still having problems uh, throughout that prep, digestive issues, food intolerances, lack of libido, fatigue, lack of recovery, constant brain fog. Um, and then I started noticing like my hair, skin, and nails were just getting so, so dry. And, and I take a supplement for that. So a lot of these problems, like as they came on, I was finding band-aids for them. So like digestive problems, let me add a greens, probiotic, um, sugar-free citrus cell, let me add some fiber. Like, let me do all these things to aid that one problem. Then it was like, oh, I, I'm not recovering from the gym. It's constant fatigue like my body just aches. I was literally feeling like an 80 year old woman. I could not, like, it was awful. Um, and it's, I mean, I still deal with it. I say like it was, but it's, it's still kind of happening. Um, cause I, I'm not that far, you know, into explant. So I, I can't really say 
like I'm cured, you know? Um, so beyond that, uh, I was getting like ringing in my ears. I know that's kind of a weird one. These were kind of like off and on, like all of these symptoms, it wasn't like constant. The inflammation and brain fog and lack of recovery, that was constant. But some of these were just kind of like on and off. So I feel like I probably would have been more proactive with fixing them or at least like addressing them head on if they were a consistent nagging problem. But it, it was just so weird. It was like for a month I would deal with one, then it would go away, I would feel good for a week and then something else would pop up in conjunction with something else. And it was just, it was just, it's still very hard to pin down. Um, one of the biggest things that I noticed towards the end of that 2018 prep was just the amount of eye problems I was having. Um, kind of going back to like having the dry eyes, uh, dry skin, dry hair. Maybe I'll post some pictures of my dry skin, but I'm not joking guys. Like I would have scaly flake off skin off my cheek. It's almost like I was sunburnt and it was peeling, but I hadn't been in the sun. I mean, it was just like, like I could go like this and I would have like flakes of dead forehead fall off from the amount of dry skin I had. And my, like my skin, I wouldn't say it's oily. It's definitely always been on like the drier side, but it, I've never had like a problem with dry skin. Um, I was getting like a little just dandruff and just, you know, dry scalp. Um, my hair was started to break off. And again, that can be prep related. So I'm just, I'm very hesitant to like, I have been very hesitant to put this video out just because I'm like, oh, BII prep. I still think it's BII. 100% like I'm standing by my decision. I didn't spend an extra 5,500 to get these suckers out if I didn't think it was BII. Eight months after implants, I really started noticing differences in my eyes. I just felt like they were heavy, like my eyelids almost hung down when I would smile. Like my face was just changing shapes and it was because of my eyes. They just didn't look healthy. Like they were always bloodshot. They were always like had a yellow or like a glossy tint to them. Um, and then like blurred vision at times and I've always had 20-20 vision. And then um, the biggest thing that I noticed on my eyes, and I actually went to an eye specialist and I was forming calluses on my eyes from having chronic dry eye. And it was from just not being able to properly lubricate my eyes with my blinks because I had no, you know, liquid there or like lubrication there with my eyelid. And I'm someone, especially in prep, who drinks well over a gallon of water every day. So there's no way I should be dealing with dry skin, dry hair, dry eyes, brittle nails. I honestly didn't even think about BII for the first probably year of having, you know, implants. I didn't even think that these could be, you know, the culprit behind all of these symptoms. So, um, Transitioning out of prep, so I ended prep June-ish is when I won my pro card of the 2018 season. So I won my IFBB pro card at Junior Nationals in June. Um, and so after that, I transitioned back into off season. So I am now, you know, eight, nine months into my off season and I'm st still dealing with a lot of these symptoms and then some and then, you know, make them worse. So that was kind of, the, you know, the past four or five months is really when I kind of got turned on to BII and like all the symptoms and even thinking that it could be a possibility of, you know, everything that I've been going through. Um, it's, I, I really like, I feel like I just need to say like everything to you guys. I just need to like spend an hour just explaining how hard my life has been over the last, you know, year because it's just hard, like I haven't even, it was really hard to even realize like what was going on because I just, I knew I didn't feel myself. Like I knew something was wrong. Like I just did not feel good and healthy, but I didn't really know like what was causing it or I couldn't really pinpoint exactly what was wrong. Um, I had a couple close people in my life, you know, recommend that I go talk to a therapist. 
few months ago because they had they were just watching me struggle like JC has watched me have so much anxiety over the last year and I I am not an anxious person I would really consider myself a very outgoing person um, but this last year and a half has just completely just changed who I am um, inside and out another thing that I have more so seen like over the last five months or so is just the the constant I'm talking constant brain fog fatigue lack of recovery even now um, now that I'm out of prep you would think like you know libido would come back some of your hormones would kind of come back and check and and those things would be able to kind of work themselves out but um, just the brain fog like uh, there are some days where I sit on my laptop, I'm talking for hours, hours, looking at my emails, and I'll answer one email, two emails. And it's because, like, I'm reading over and over and over, and I'm just, it's not processing. Like, I'm just, it, just the constant brain fog, and just, I can't concentrate. And um, there was a time last month, actually, that I was on the phone with my bank, and they were asking me security questions um, to get into my account. And I literally could not remember my mom's maiden name. That's a problem. Couldn't remember my social security number. That's a problem. Like, I don't want to say I was losing my memory because I obviously know those things. But just like my mental sharpness it just wasn't there. Like, it hasn't been there in, in like a year and a half. And it's just, it's crazy because when I was going through all that stuff, I just, I felt like I was literally losing my mind. I was like, there's something wrong. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I should go talk to a therapist. I don't know if I need to go to freaking Thailand and just fall off the map for a while. I don't know if I just need to, you know, completely walk away from coaching and Instagram, put everything down and just connect with me. Like I literally, I, it's it's just so hard to explain guys like I know some of you guys follow me on Instagram and I have had a few of you guys reach out and just say like you know is everything okay you just seem very different over the last few months like and honestly now looking back at those messages I'm really glad that other people were seeing it and it's not just in my head if I'm not feeling good you know mentally physically emotionally spiritually like I just I kind of shut down and if I don't shut down I, I put out that struggle but when you're struggling for six seven months eight months a year like eventually it just becomes like damn is this girl depressed or is she just like crazy is she dealing with all like she's she's always complaining about something she's always sick she's always dealing with you know XYZ and so at a point I was just like tired of putting it out there not really sure what I was dealing with emotionally I was like going crazy because I didn't know what was going on and I had anxiety like on top of everything and anxiety is like a debilitating emotion if you have ever dealt with anxiety it is tough like I was never someone who dealt with like anxiety or depression and not that I have ever like looked down on these on those people or like thought that they were weak minded or something but I just thought that like you know that that would never be me like I I'm strong like mentally strong like I can get myself out of anything but guys I'm telling you like it I was so anxiety just ridden it it just it was not me it was so not me. Most of these symptoms were going on through prep and then they just continued, you know, post prep. So now, like I said, eight, nine months post show, um, I was still dealing with a lot of these things. Um, another few symptoms I was dealing with, uh, heart palpitations. So that's like when, you're beat, when your heart beats really fast or like out of rhythm um, or just starts beating like super fast all of a sudden. Um, that was happening to me. I would, uh, I, I had some heart palpitations, like whenever I would do like an intense, an intense hit session, but having heart palpitations when you're like walking around the house to the point where you have to stop and like, I literally thought I was having a heart attack. Um, I, yeah, that's not normal. No, no, not normal. And that was still happening. I mean, I haven't had any since I've explanted, knock on wood somewhere. 
but um, not to say that it, it's just too early like in the explant process for me to say like I'm not dealing with them anymore so um, this is just the symptoms I was dealing with and still currently dealing with I suppose until I get a further update on the girls so um, beyond the heart palpitations uh, body odor I know this is kind of icky but um, everyone knows the smell of their own body odor okay after implants my body odor completely changed my periods got worse I would lose my menstrual cycle uh, in contest prep just because my body fat got so low I would I've always gotten it back post show in about like two or three months but when I got it back this next time like the 2018 prep after that prep it came back with full force and vengeance so back to like body aches uh, like joint pain inflammation that kind of stuff I know that like my lifestyle is pretty you know go 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 in the gym of course you're gonna have sore muscles of course like sometimes you're gonna lack recovery but to the point where I was experiencing it like that's not okay. Well, I've been training for, you know, six years. I was a six sport athlete in high school. So my history with just training and like that physical stress on my body, it's been a long time. My body can handle quite a bit. Um, but like I said, I would do like two or three exercises for glutes and hams and I would be sore for days, like days on days on days. I was, I, I dropped to like a one, um, like one body part split basically for the week and even that was it was kind of a lot for me sometimes so skin rashes dull skin underarm uh rashes and eczema i have dealt with all of this which i have never had before again um over the last six seven months um i had i started having rashes pop up on my arms let me see if i can actually show you guys these right now because uh it got it was decently bad before surgery on friday and it might still be there. So oh, I don't know if, if that's really picking it up like it should. It's just like little bumps. Um, and I thought they were like, like sweat pimples from training for the longest time. Like I was just thinking like, oh, like I need to get home and shower a little sooner. Like it's probably just you know, irritation bumps or something, but I don't think it is. I mean, I've, I've had these and they've just gotten worse, honestly. Um, over the last few months i have some hormonal acne that i've pretty much always dealt with um but i just feel like everything has just amplified like i, I just don't know how to explain it other than it's just an immune response when your body is more concerned about fighting off the foreign object in your body than it is about you know keeping your hair skin and nails and hormones and everything else healthy there are going to be parts of your body that or like issues that are compromised because your body is more concerned about fighting off that foreign object and that's the only way I can make sense of it like I mean when you think about putting a foreign object in your body any foreign object your body is going to either accept it or it's going to reject it and if it rejects it but it's inside your your immune system is compromised if your immune system is compromised then how does that show up externally it shows up in a lot of ways i mean it shows up in skin rashes and dry hair dry nails uh, digestive issues um, lack of recovery some women have food intolerances and digestive issues ibs um, they have lyme's disease like it's just it's so crazy and this is the hardest part of like my own story because I wasn't someone who was willing to wait for six, seven, ten years to see if my symptoms got worse. Um, maybe it sounds kind of, I don't know, naive, like I jumped the gun to get these out um, because it was just a gut feeling. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't go get tons of panels or blood work done for this stuff. I didn't test for like toxicity levels or heavy metals or um, go see like holistic health people like to figure this out. This was something that I knew and documented throughout prep. I didn't know it was BII, 
but I documented all of my symptoms as they were happening like I always do, just in my planner. I write the date, I'm saying like dealing with this, yada, 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 and just talk about it. Um, I spend a lot of time journaling and writing in my planner, so it just, it wasn't hard to go back and kind of look at what I was dealing with. Um, and then also I used Instagram archive. I went back and looked at, you know, kind of what I was going through and any like digestive problems I talked about or any other problems that I talked about throughout prep and like throughout almost two years of having implants. So, <clears throat> you know, eventually I just, I took a step back and looked at everything that I had dealt with and was continuing to deal with. Really had no business to be dealing with it. Um, you know, I live such a healthy lifestyle. I eat so healthy. My habits are healthy. There's just no way I should not feel and look healthy. So, you know, eventually I just had to take a step back, look at all of my symptoms as a whole. And I just came to the conclusion that it, like it was my immune system that was being compromised. I had a lot of band-aids guys, a lot. I was doing glutamine for lack of recovery. I was having sleep aids for lack of sleep, um, digestive enzymes and greens and probiotics and fiber and like all of these band-aids to fix, you know, a root cause problem. Another couple that I was dealing with were circulation and temperature regulation problems. So there would be times where it would be cold outside and I'm not joking, I literally, I would be shivering to the point where my lips would turn blue and I could not stop shaking. And JC was like, it's not that cold, Hannah. Like you're being dramatic. And I knew I was being dramatic. Like it felt like I was being dramatic, but I literally could not stop shaking. Like it was like, I was cold to the freaking core. Um, and then on the flip side of that, I was having occasional night sweats. Again, this wasn't like all the time, but I would wake up a couple nights where my back would just be drenched. And I, I it was just confusing because I didn't, I don't eat anything. Like I, I'm a pretty structured person. So um, where I would think like, oh, maybe your like thermogenesis is off from the night before. Like maybe you ate something that made you dream and have night sweats. None of that happened. I mean, I, I eat so regimen that um, it was just weird that I would wake up all of a sudden, you know, in night sweats. Now it's just kind of like being patient and it's a waiting game to see if this was really it. Um, you know, I am a health professional and it does sound kind of silly that I didn't go consult with doctors and try to figure out what was going on. Like whenever these things started happening, but um, I'm just someone who, I'm, I'm super, super intuitive with my body. So when these things started popping up, I was very good about recognizing them and you know confronting the problem, aiding that problem or sticking a bandaid on that problem until the next one would pop up. Um, but you know, it got to a certain point after prep where I was just like, there's something going on here. There's a deeper root cause to why this stuff is happening and it's it's not just prep you hit this certain point of post-show where things just start clicking again like you just feel better you sleep better you eat better you you know train harder you just you just you're overall well like you're just you're feeling better and that just never really came for me after this you know 2018 season i just feel like it's been one problem after the next after the next after the next and it's just it's it's been hard um and i feel like you guys are seeing a, a really good side of it right now um this is like i said day five post-op and i feel great like um i'm gonna pop up some pictures of my face and eyes pre and post-op guys these pictures are crazy and i'm not trying to get ahead of myself i'm not trying to you know say like oh surgery you know fix my eye problems because i still do have you know some discoloration on that eye and it's still a little bloodshot but just the mental clarity guys like I, I just can't explain to you guys how much better I feel even five days post-op like this was an extreme surgery to get these boobs out and I feel really good like it's just it's crazy so beyond all the symptoms that I was dealing with everything just being able to roll my shoulders back and not feel like my implants are going to pop out of my chest, being able to 
take a full breath without thinking twice or being restricted, being able to, not that I can yet, to do a push up or to do a pull up without like a pulling stinging pain of, of my implant. Like that alone was worth it to me to go through with this explant process. Um, I'm not someone who got super emotionally attached to my implants. I thought they always, I, I just always thought they didn't really fit me. I'm someone who has always associated myself with, you know, being an athlete. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know, this this video is so hard because it's something that I've, I've wanted to put out for a few months, but it was just hard saying like, I have BII when I really didn't know. There's, there's no test for BII. A lot of surgeons still don't really support BII, even though I think that's crap. So there were just a lot of unknowns. I, di I didn't wanna put any information, false information out there, um, especially on YouTube because it's permanent or semi-permanent, I guess, like you can always delete it, but. Yeah, so it's just been a lot. If you guys have made it to the end of this video, I don't know how you did, <laughs> but I'm glad you did. Thanks for listening to this long spiel of symptoms and craziness. I'm hoping it can get better at least now that I have the girls out and I'm taking that you know, step in the right direction, but um, yeah. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Um, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like this video, give it a thumbs up. I know my video didn't have a whole lot of structure and organization, but I'm hoping I can get out some more content and just information for you guys on the whole explant process and how I'm doing, how to go about that, kind of how to find your surgeon, what you should be asking for, and all that stuff. Uh, but this is a good start. So if you want to see more videos on my explant process, feel free to drop some topics down below or some questions down below, maybe some video ideas, but let me know what you guys want to see. See you guys in the next BII related video. You guys have a great one.